Hey guys, this is a video in my MATLAB tutorial series. In this video, we will look at how to create functions in MATLAB. Functions can be very versatile and useful in the sense that they can take one or more inputs and return one or more outputs depending on what you set up your function to do. Just like in math, you give inputs for a function, MATLAB performs operations involving that input and spits out some outputs. Let's look at how to create a function. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. If you click on Home and then click on the Add New button, you see that you have Function and Live Function. We can click on the function option if we want to use regular script or we can click on live function if we want to use live script we want to be using live script in this video let's click on the function option you can see that MATLAB creates an outline that functions should generally follow and you can use this to um, make your function I wrote out a couple things in, as, as comments uh, under a under, uh, function uh, outline and these are uh, some guidelines to follow when you're writing your function. So let's go over them. Before we start with these, let's, let's uh, look at this function outline. Functions always start with the word function. Then you have your output names. If you have more than one outputs, if you have more than one output, you need to have brackets uh, with your various output names separated by commas. If you have a single output name, you don't need the brackets. And then you have an equal sign and then you have your function name followed by parentheses with your input names separated by commas so if you have multiple inputs you'll have your input argument one and then comma input argument two and your function needs to be terminated with an end statement and in between here this is where you'll write the code that MATLAB will execute when your function is called up and these are some guidelines that uh, you should follow Valid function names only comprise letters, numbers, or underscores. Function names should start with a letter. There shouldn't be any spaces. And you cannot use any other special characters with the exception of underscores. And another thing to note is that function names are case sensitive. So when you're calling up a function name, be mindful of how you uh, saved the name. So if you don't spell it exactly, you may not be calling up the function. And the MATLAB file name and the function name need to match. So this uh, function name, whatever you name it here, should match uh, the file name. So a good way to do that is type in your function name first. So let's say I'm calling this my function and then click on uh, save as and automatically your function name is what comes up in the file name and you just save it. With these guidelines in mind, let's write our very first simple function. I'm not going to start off with the function outline, rather I'm going to write a, a function from scratch on a script just so we can talk through each step. So let's close this out and uh, not going to save anything. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, start from scratch. Let's create a function that takes the radius of a sphere as an input and returns the sphere's volume and surface area as outputs. So as I mentioned, uh, I have to start with the word function and then space. And in this case, I have more than one output. So I will have to use brackets. And within the brackets, I'm going to name my outputs. I have volume, comma, and then I have surface uh, area. I'm going to um, going to include an underscore between surface and area, and then 
let's say I have an equal sign and I'll call this sphere then capital I and F O sphere info. And the only input that it's going to take is R, R for a radius. And remember that it needs to be terminated, the function needs to be terminated with an end statement. Uh, and in between here is where the code will go that MATLAB will execute whenever the function is called up. The volume will equal 4 over 3 times pi times r cubed. And surface area, that's going to equal 4 times pi times r squared. And that's pretty much it. That's all I need to do for this very simple function. And before I can do anything with it, I should save this. So go to save as and notice that it already picks up what the function name is and I'm going to save as that. Now, you cannot run a function with the run script button here. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have to call it up from the command window. So, I'm going to open a bracket, type in volume, and then uh, surface underscore area, close the bracket, equals, and I'm going to type in the function name that I'm looking for, sphere info, and now I'm going to give it the out input value. Since R is the input, I'll give it the value for the radius. Let's say this is uh, 2, uh, and then I'll close off the parentheses and press enter to run it, and then MATLAB will return volume and surface area. So I have uh, volume is 33.51 approximately and surface area is 50.27 approximately. And I haven't given units, so um, whatever the unit for radius was, it could have been uh, the units, for, it would have been the units for volume and surface area. So we're going to um, call up this function again, but this time I'm going to flip the order of volume and sphere, uh, surface area. So I'm going to say surface area first. I'm going to say volume afterwards. And then I'll uh, execute the rest of it as it was before. So sphere info 2. And when I press enter, you'll see that the volume was 33.51 before. Now that's assigned to surface area and volume here uh, is, is, the, is the value of the surface area. When you're calling up a function, MATLAB doesn't um, care what you name your uh, outputs here. You have to be consistent with your output names within your code, but when you're calling it up in the command with the window, MATLAB doesn't uh, uh, care. So you have to be careful to put it in in the same order so you know what the values are telling you about your function. So if I had called it apples and oranges, MATLAB will still give me outputs. And that's exactly what happens here. So just be mindful of that when you're calling it up. It's, uh, it's a good idea to be consistent, but uh, if you don't want to be, uh, you don't necessarily have to be. Uh, if you wanted to assign it new names for whatever uh, reason, you could. Another thing to note is that when you don't specify the number of outputs when you call up the function, MATLAB by default assumes you only want the first output, or in other words, it'll only return the first output. So let's try it. I'm just not going, to, I'm going to not give it any um, output names. I'm simply going to say sphere info uh, 2, and this time I only get one value. And that's the first value, the value of the sphere's volume. So if you want all of the outputs, you have to write it in as we had done uh, early on. So let's clear this and let's uh, 
CLC to get rid of everything in the command window. Now we're going to write another function. And this time, uh, it's going to have two inputs and two outputs. Also, there is going to be a little bit more code than a simple formula. Uh, it's going to be a piecewise function of, of, some, of some type. Let's just go ahead and uh, write the code. We're going to have to start with the word function and then space. And this time I'm going to call my outputs y and z. And I'm going to call my uh, function piecewise one. And I'm going to call my inputs x and r. And before anything else, I'm going to include my uh, end statement just so I have everything straightened up. And this time what I want to do is if the user inputs an x, uh, if the user inputs a x value that is smaller than or equal to zero, I want to prompt them to enter another x value that is larger than zero. So while x is less than or equal to zero x equals input and this is uh, the text that will be displayed to the user please and uh, enter a uh, x value larger than a zero and we're going to close off all apostrophes and parentheses and we're going to um, end the while while loop just indent things for um, visuals now next what I want to do is if uh, x is larger than 0 and x is smaller than 10 then I want to do y equals r times x squared plus 5 times x and z equals sine of x times r um, and if uh, x is greater than or equal to 10 I'm going to uh, greater than or equal to uh, and y equals cosine x times r z equals 2 times x times actually plus 15 times x times r and else if if they found if the user finds a way to break this some other way, I just want to simply display. Uh, try again. So uh, I need to end this uh, if statement, and once again, I'm going to um, indent this as well. These uh, these bits of the code as well, just just so it's visually a little bit more appealing. I'm going to end this, indent this end statement. All right, so what we have is as long as the user is inputting something, uh, an x value that's, uh, as long as the user is inputting a, a x value that is less than or equal to zero, they're going to be prompted to enter a new value. And once we get a value that's uh, larger than zero, a MATLAB will evaluate whether or not that's between 0 and 10. If it's between 0 and 10, the outputs will come from this. If if uh, the x value is larger than or equal to 10, we get this. And for anything else, if the user finds a way to break this some other way, which I can't think of at the moment, but uh, I just left this in there just in case, uh, we just display try again. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, save this. Let's run it. So 
So we'll uh, we'll do um, y z equals piece wise one, and we'll have two comma one, and when we do that, we get a value, and if we had entered a value that was smaller than zero or equal to zero, then let's see what happens. I'm prompted to uh, enter an x value larger than zero. I, and I should have probably left a space here after zero. Let's, let's try that again. Control C to terminate the current code. Uh, clear CLC. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, y C is Y one zero comma comma one, and it tells me I need to enter a value that's larger than zero. So I will do negative two. And it's going to keep prompting me until I give it a value that's larger than zero. So I'll say two, and then it gives me the answer. I can use functions that I write within larger scripts. If you have a set of tasks that will be repeated for various inputs, you might consider writing a function for your script. Just uh, make sure that your function's code file is saved within the same folder as your uh, main script file. Uh, let's try writing a very simple script. Uh, I'm not going to add in a bunch of additional stuff. I'm just going to make it very straightforward. So x equals 2, r equals 1, and then we can call up uh, our uh, made up function as we would call up any built-in MATLAB function. Just just call it up here like that and then we just need to save it uh, save as uh, call it trial script uh, one okay and we can run it uh, maybe it might be a good idea to clear anything away that's in the command window and uh, the, as well as the workspace and there we go we see we get the response or the outputs that we uh, we're expecting now what happens if this is a, a zero so let's let's try that again when we run it well this time it will prompt me to enter a x value that's larger than zero so I'll say two so notice that I get the answer but the x value still stayed as zero within the workspace So just make sure that you know what your code is doing. Just try out different scenarios and see how your code works and what are the limitations. And uh, when you are able to understand that, I think uh, using functions can make your life a lot easier in some cases. That's it for this video. I hope this video has been helpful in some way. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out other videos on my channel, especially the MATLAB and Simulink tutorial series as well as the graphing and scientific calculator tutorial series. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Until next time, take care, guys.